everybody. Welcome into One Bills Live. Maddie Glab alongside of Steve Tasker in hour number two of today's show, our final hour. And we would like to bring one of our friends on, NFL Network analytics expert Cynthia Freeland joins us. She's also the Bills preseason TV sideline reporter. Cynthia, good to see you. Great to see you. I, um, I've um i been playing with a bunch of rescue dogs, so I'm just in from that. I'm trying to working on wow. something with rescue dogs. So the good Bills people are listening, all of Bills Mafia. If you have a good rescue dog organization okay. in Buffalo, send it to me on Twitter. I like oh, that. Awesome. That's a great idea. I'm I'm a big time dog owner, so that's awesome to hear. Yeah, yeah. Tasker's got a what dog you, named Vern. What else are you, are you doing? Anything with football these days, numbers wise, analytics wise? What are you doing these days Absolutely. in the offseason? Absolutely. Well, the schedule's about to come out, so we've got to figure out everything. We know who, we know where, we just don't know when. So that should happen hopefully here in the next couple of days, maybe a week. But I'm very excited for that because it's kind of like the final cherry on top of everything getting ready. And then it's fully time to turn the page forward and focus on all the games in 2024. So just getting really excited. The draft was incredible. I am now lobbying for Buffalo to get a draft because if Detroit can put <laughs> up those kind of numbers, you can imagine how much fun it would be in Buffalo. Oh, my yeah, gosh. Yeah, I'll say this. It, uh, it would be chilly. It's a, late April is a little bit of a roll of the dice weather-wise. But I guess uh, it is for Detroit, too, yeah, right? Yeah, uh, we'll they're on the other side of the lake, though. So, yeah, um, yeah I'm all about it. Especially when they get the new stadium. Let's do it, you yeah. know? Oh, that would be a lot I of fun. I so. I mean, it's okay because people who can't, like, Michigan had the gamut of, like, we got there Wednesday, it was cold, it was cold Thursday, Friday it was rainy, so well, it, it got it got nice, and then Saturday it was hot. Like, it was crazy. We got we right. had all four seasons pretty much just missing snow, but other than that, it, you got all four seasons there. Well, we might, kind we of might in, be able to hit day. the snow. In April, we might be able to hit the snow. Yeah, exactly. We well, get Cynthia, you crushed the draft. It was awesome to see you doing things I know you you take. I remember talking to you. Maybe it was around the playoffs, I believe. And you, I was like, what are you doing? And you're, you said, I'm preparing for the draft. I'm like, it's the playoffs. You're already preparing for the draft. So we know you took a lot of time to prep. You killed it. And coming out of the draft – we got to talk about what the Bills did. What is your assessment of what Buffalo did in the first couple of rounds? They trade out a night one and pick up a wide receiver in Keon Coleman, uh, then pick up a safety in Cole Bishop and a defensive tackle in Dwayne Carter. What do you think about those additions? I mean, all positions of need. I felt really bad for the Bills fans that were in attendance because it was cold <laughs> Thursday night. And there were some kids that were like, when are we going to pick? But they all had a lot of fun the next day. So it, it was all okay. But Ultimately, I thought it was really smart for a team that needed to reload the way that the Bills did. It felt like they had a clear vision. It felt like they knew who they wanted to get and where they could acquire them. They seemed to have a good handle on how far back they could trade for certain positions because obviously there's there's a few, you know, areas where the cupboard needed to be restocked, if you will. But getting all of those picks, I mean, look at this. This is a ridiculous number of picks right <laughs> here. And it felt like, I mean, you, you just got to look at all of the like I, I actually think many of these guys will be contributors right from the jump they're going to be really important even starting like now kind of getting their, their on the ground running like figuring out like what are the strategies how are we going to look different because clearly the offense is going to look different and clearly the defense is going to look different a, a lot of guys who've been there for key contributors for a long time are you know moving on and and it's time to to restock yeah, and you th you think about the first, I don't know, maybe the five, first six out of seven, five out of six guys from Keon to Cole Bishop, uh, even Ray Davis. I mean, those three guys could be, you know, Davis could be in the rotation right away, mm -hmm. as well as, uh, you know, the, the defensive tackle as well. I mean, he's going to be rotating in. Uh, Van Pran Granger, that guy could start. Uh, I mean, it, it, it really does look like they got some guys at the right spots that could step in and, and at least compete right away. And I was going to ask you, why did Keon Coleman come to the Bills? I mean, it, it seems like now that we've got him and we start to dive a little deeper on him, you know, he's a 20-year-old guy, a young guy, still on the ascent, big, athletic so it seems like uh, a perfect fit for Buffalo, and the fact that they knew he was still going to be there, really, you're right, led him to the value. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, well, first of all, before we get off of it, Van Pran Granger, when, when that 
jersey is printed. Can you send me a picture of it? Because that is the longest last name I've Tiny ever text. seen. That's going to go. Van Pran Granger. I mean, good thing he's a huge man because otherwise, there would like if it was like you know you me out there, like that on my shoulders. Would, <laughs> right, right, and Maddie, it would be like uh, <laughs> we don't. We fine print. Of the <laughs> it's the fine print of my contract, right? Exactly, um, but yeah, I mean, I think that when it came to Coleman there was probably a sense that in this organization and what they would like to do, meaning, you know, you have to have a guy who's able to handle a fastball because Josh Allen throws the ball really hard. As we know, you have to have a guy who's big physical has an enough cold weather experience to be able to understand the elements. Of course, you're looking at Florida state footage and I don't think I need to remind anyone in Bill's mafia that he also played at Michigan state where it's cold, but ultimately you're looking at, a guy who has a nose for the end zone in a way where, especially if you look at his, like they didn't play 12 as much as you guys will probably play 12 out there this season, but you know, he's going to have a chance to be a field stretcher, get on the perimeter and take advantage of the fact that the middle is going to be crowded, given that the bills just have really great tight ends that can also handle the ball. So I think that this is going to be a really nice move. Like I hate when people say it's like, addition by subtraction but i think that in terms of what this offense in its reconstructed form would like to do this guy is a huge addition given all of the subtractions adding a weapon like keon coleman you've been discussing rookies on nfl network all week and and projecting what they could do with a career that he had and and the stats that he put up last season and beyond, you you saw him get better every single year. What are you projecting for Keon in his rookie season? Well, I thought it was kind of funny. So it's hard to project for rookies in general. It's harder when you don't know much about how their quarterback will perform at the next level. So like the Romo Dunzes of the world have a much different projection than someone who is in a system with a guy like Josh Allen, who is a very helpful known entity. And ultimately I think nine is probably the, the floor. So we were, we were talking about, of course, for fantasy football purposes, because clearly in, <laughs> you know, May we need to pick our fantasy lineups for sure. Tasker, I know he's already got his right. all set, his whole draft work <laughs> set already, but you know, I, I think when, when you look at that, I, I just thought it was, I, and again, like just a little, you know, a, a little interesting that that is actually one more touchdown than the guy who's now in Houston had. So it's, it's just interesting. You know, I, I thought that was an interesting number to add to our analysis. Yeah. And when you, when you talk about this, about uh, where the bills are going, we've, we've been signing wide receivers at, uh, I don't want to say an alarming clip, but certainly we've got a lot of receivers on our roster and, and it, and there's something... 11, including yeah, Keon. Yeah, there's 11, including Keon, and five of them, at least five of them, are 6'4". There's Chase Claypool they just signed, Mac Hollins they signed, uh, Tyrell Shavers, and Justin Shorter, uh, plus two others, one six foot, and Khalil Shakir, and Brian Thompson's also 6'1". Um, I sense a trend. Uh, yeah, I think that's a pretty good trend to... To look for big physical guys. Hmm. Also seems like your tackles could probably fit that bill as well. But ultimately, <laughs> I think that the strategy is to find the right ones. And there's so much this this sounds kind of crazy, but you know, obviously you gotta get your draft picks right, but sometimes more is better because then you get to pick which one actually works for your system. So ultimately here having and, and by the way, I remember Chase Claypool in college had some tight end experience. So there could always be that rotational factor where you're like, are we playing with 11, but it's 12, but it's really, we don't know. Like what's the disguised formations are an advantage. They're a strategic advantage. And even if you go back to like Joe Brady's days at LSU, which you, if you're like me, you could go, you could go watch it. I mean, they're there. They're, <laughs> it's, it's fun to watch. But if you go, you know, you see that the tricks and the the disguised formations are really helpful. So if you get a lot of guys with similar body types and you find the run, ones that do the things you want them to do, perhaps you can leverage the fact that in different alignments, the defense will be then very confused as to, is this the time where he's playing tight end? Is this the time where the tight end's playing wide receiver? Like how many, wide, how many pass catchers do we have to account for? Perhaps we're going to get a little messed up and that will be advantage bills. I know it's tough parting ways with a receiver like Stefan Diggs, who did so much for Buffalo in his four seasons. We saw a thousand yards out of him every single season and four straight AFC East titles, which he was a big part of. 
But in that same line of talk, we heard Brandon Bean say we needed an infusion of youth on this roster. Uh, you think about the salary cap. You think about the, the people that we're paying on this roster. You've got a Josh Allen who's well into his contract and one of the best NFL quarterbacks. You have to pay people like that. And due to that, you also have to add some younger people on the roster to make everything work. Joe Brady is going to be in his first season as Buffalo's offensive coordinator, his first full season. We saw a little bit of what Joe Brady was doing last season. Haven't seen a full season yet. Why should Bill's Mafia not be afraid of this change that could be coming that may actually help this team out? I think there's kind of two ways to look at it. Number one, Getting quarterback right is the single most important decision that any regime from coach to GM has to make. And quarterback is right. We can check that box definitively. Now, adding the fundamental weapons around him, to me, always starts in the trenches. And the O-line is constructed in a way that really optimizes for Josh Allen. Those two things working hand in glove mean that the other complement of pass catchers and ball runners, they can be... I'm not I'm not suggesting like that you're replacing Stefan Diggs. What I'm suggesting is that for the amount of money that you pay for a Stefan Diggs, especially in this part of his career, now could you get a, a lot of different pieces that work in a really competitive division? I mean, the AFC East is kind of a total nightmare at this point. So when you're looking at all of those things combined, it's like, well, now we need to restock for safety. We need to restock at corner. We got the the line needs a little bit of help in the middle, like all of these things, right? So you're you're looking at how to scarcity rules the day. And that's not a it doesn't sound nice, but it's true for all of us, right? So there are fewer Josh Allens in this world than there are people who can catch footballs. Now I'm not saying they're to the caliber of Stefan Diggs, but I'm saying that you're gonna get a lot of different opportunities to create different offensive looks with a multitude of guys than you're gonna get from what you had to pay Stefan Diggs in this in this portion of his career and that's just the way the business goes it's not nice but it's it's sometimes the way it goes but by the way he's not paying income tax personal income tax in texas he's fine you know big yeah. raise yeah exactly so, uh, one thing too and i know that i don't want to put you on the spot but it's hard enough for maddie and me and brownie to keep track of the bills and what's going on with them but if you look at the bills draft and i was going to ask you about the rest of the maybe the afc east the bills and i th i didn't think about this until the day or two after we started talking about all these draft picks the bills got help, if you call all these draft picks help, at all three levels on both sides of the ball. You got a running back, a wide receiver. You got an offensive, a couple of offensive linemen. Uh, then you got uh, you know, a defensive tackle, a defensive end, a corner, and a mm -hmm. safety, and a linebacker and on the defensive side. They got help and competition at every single level on both sides of the ball. And that's basically uh, – I mean, it's like a fairy tale, right? I mean, you never, you never really think you're going to be able to do that. But with 10 picks, it's like the old days when, when I got drafted. Like, there's 11 rounds and stuff. Everybody gets 10 <laughs> new guys, right? But this is, uh, this is unusual, I think. And I, I think the Bills really did a nice job of bolstering the entire group of positions. I think the other thing that can't be overstated here is, you know, maybe not all these guys make the 53, but and some end up on the scout team. But if we learned anything from last year, we learned that the injury bug has absolutely no discretion as to when, who, or why. And being able to restock like this with those many, with that, those many, what I don't speak English anymore, with <laughs> that many different players gives you the opportunity then if something's really terrible and if one position group gets totally messed up, like what happened on to the defense last year, like now you have guys who will have been in the system since May and know what's going on and you'll be able to have a better shot of replacement value being higher than you're never going to get as, as good as your, you know, starters, right? You'll your replacement level though will be much higher than guys who aren't as familiar with the system. 
Let's look at the AFC East. Uh, the New York Jets drafted uh, offensive tackle Aluf Shanu with their first pick, and the Patriots at the third pick in the NFL draft. They go ahead and grab Drake May out of North Carolina. And then the Dolphins later on in the first round draft an edge rusher in Chop Robinson. Which AFC East team got better? Got, w- w- how would you rate them one, two, three, four in terms of how the draft looked for each team? Where does Aaron Rodgers factor into this? Because to me, uh, that's a really big thing for the Jets. That's a huge factor. Being able to get Olu Fashnow will help them. Their O-line was a big problem for them last year. Miami, I like Chop Robinson a lot. I thought they had an exceptional day three. I, I think the Patriots are still in rebuilding mode. I thought it was really fun to hear Drake maybe like, yeah, I get to play, you know, with like the position that one of the best of all time, so to speak, played or the best, I don't know. It was, it was very funny. Like you could tell he was nervous and he'll just get better at these pressers, but it was, it was very sweet and cute. So, you know, I, I think there were some pluses and minuses in general. I still think it's the bills to, to control. Um, a lot of it again comes down to injuries, but I, I think Aaron Rodgers coming back is going to be a pain. It's going to be a pain <laughs> for non-Jets teams <laughs> in general. Right. Oh, I think so. Too. Uh, it, and I'll say this too: we said <clears throat> it's it is going to come down to Aaron. I and mean, this is and it is a even we thought last year when they pushed all their chips to the table, Aaron Rodgers and and all the guys they got to br- this year. It's like do or die. If if it doesn't yeah. go well this year, um, they're going to detonate the entire floor and park yeah. facility and start from scratch. Am I right? I, I don't see any other way around it. I mean, right. I, I'm not, you know, I don't wish that on anyone, but it just right, right. feels like you had the two years ago, the offensive and defensive rookie of the year on the same team. And now you're in a position where you just can't. I mean, obviously last year was was bad luck, right? I mean, four snaps, that's bad luck for anyone, even if you're playing against them and you don't want them to win as Bills fans would agree. But, but at, at the end of the day, it's still bad luck. And I mean... I don't know. It's it's hard. They now the Jets now have the longest playoff drought in playoff history or in in professional history because the Lions you know made it to the playoffs last year. So that's that's an interesting one. But um, it will come down to this one. And and I'm I'm really curious to see how it goes because I don't know if one O lineman and O line makes. However, Tyron Smith they did a lot of moves in free agency to address the line. But, you know, again, it's going to come down to health. Like if those guys can't stay healthy either, you know, you it, it, it'll be it's going to be this is the, one of the bigger, more fascinating headlines. Like last year, we couldn't stop saying his name. And I was like, if I have to hear this name one more time, and I was like <laughs> Aaron Rodgers is so fun to watch. But like, good Lord. And this year, I don't think we've heard it enough. Right. Like we haven't people kind of forget about it. So Not you're, you're really it, but... you're still high on Aaron and his ability to play 40 years old coming off an Achilles. Now he's been he's been set as limited. You're still high on his ability to get it done. I am because, you know, despite watching him be one of the best Hail Mary throwers that I've ever seen, um, he still gets the pre snap stuff right. The reads are right. The, the the between the ear stuff is great. He is not as much of a pocket guy as some of his contemporaries were, like the Peytons and even the Tom Brady's right of the world. So he does have a bit more of that mobility, but he doesn't rely on it to the point where he's Anthony Richardson and he's you know constantly rushing when he doesn't know where to go. He gets those first, second, and third reads completely right. So I mean, I until obviously I'd like to see him on the field because. No one Achilles is a real injury and people, you know, don't often it's hard to recover. I mean, shoot, I at 40, like a hangover last three days. So, you know, <laughs> it's 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 crazy to think. But I, I do think that I, you know, assuming he's healthy. Yeah, I'm, I'm still worried about him. One more question for me, Cynthia. It has to do with the wide receivers that went at the bottom of the first round. You look at Brian Thomas Jr. uh, going to the Jags and Xavier Worthy going to or going to the Chiefs and Ricky Pearsall going to the 49ers and Xavier Leggett going to the Panthers. Which one of these guys could have a big first season as a rookie with the fits of the teams that they went to? 
I, I mean, Leggett's going to be asked to do a lot because there is a lot to do in Carolina. It was also the worst kept secret in football that like the Panthers love this kid. Did I think they were going to, you know, trade up one spot with the, I don't know. I, I don't, I didn't think about it that much, but you knew he, they were really gunning for him. Um, I just think that it's just going to be a matter of volume. Like just, just like I think, you know, Keon is going to have a lot of volume. I think they need a lot of help there. I mean, Adam Thielen's great and Deontay Johnson was a great addition, but I think they're going to ask a lot of Leggett. I think that that offense in general needs a huge infusion and that's what they were looking for. So, I mean, I, Pearsall's great and he's fast, but I think that, you know, they've got a lot of mouths to feed in San Francisco and Xavier Worthy's kind of a home run guy, but not necessarily a guy who you're, I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't crack a thousand yards, right? Like that, that would be very not shocking, even though he's a deep ball guy and super fast, just because they've got a lot of mouths to feed as well, assuming all their receivers come back and they have the people we think they're going to have, but we know Travis Kelsey's still there. That's for sure. So Mm -hmm. that's going to be interesting. Cynthia, good stuff as always. Thanks so much Thanks, for spending Cynthia. some time with us. We'll I can't catch wait you to see you guys camp. soon enough. We'll see you It'll in the be pre-season. here before we know it. I know. All right. Yes, Get over it will. here soon. Appreciate you, Cynthia. Have a great rest of your week.